Ray, this has been such a momentous year, uh, both for the world and for the markets and economies. We had a pandemic, zero interest rates across the curve, a shift to a new monetary policy regime, unprecedented fiscal stimulation. And all of this led you to take uh, to undertake an investigation of 500 years of history to better understand all of these dynamics and how they played out in the past. So I wanted to start by asking you, what are some of the most important lessons that you learned from the study of history and how do they relate to the big themes and risks in the markets that we're experiencing today? Well, I mean, it, 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 was, so, it was so interesting. You know, when one looks at back on one's lifetime and experiences, um, I'm 71. I started in the markets when I was 12, so I had a lot of that. I was born in 14, 1949. That was the beginning of the new paradigm. And so my frame of reference and most everybody's frame of reference is something like from there. Maybe people will look at since 1960, 70 or something. Um, when I rolled the clock back to 1900, let's say you look at 1900, um, and let alone if you go back before that, and you see, um, okay, pick a country, try it, pick a country and pick an asset class and find, or any asset class, and try to retain wealth um, and see what happens. Uh, if you start in 1900, um, and I picked that because we're not just starting at the new beginning, the beginning of um, the new world order in 1945, but you see the cycles, which in many ways are more similar today than uh, any time in our lifetimes, uh, you find that um, basically almost all wealth was destroyed. You could take the most successful countries. They would be uh, the United States and Great Britain. If you just look at that period, let's say from 1900 or really 1910 to 1945, um, if, um, the um, through the inflation, depreciation, value of money through taxation. Taxation rates went from zero to marginal tax rates on income being um, close to 90%, depending on which country, um, and estate taxes rising to um, in the vicinity of 80%. And then if you look at um, um, then foreign exchange controls, and the depreciation of money, and and um, then you had wars. Imagine that period. Um, in that um, roughly 35-year period, you had two wars and you had a depression. And what we might remember of it uh, was not nearly as bad as if you were in Germany, Japan, or in Russia, or in any of the other leading, Spain, any of the other leading countries. In those countries, where would you have maintained uh, wealth if you were starting in 1900? And then if you go back to other cycles, you go down before that, you look at the 1800s and so on, you see that happen repeatedly. Now, what that did is it prompted me to say, what would I create as the alternative to cash? I call it alt cash. In other words, what is the storehold of wealth? In terms of, let's say, asset allocation, you can protect yourself very effectively. And if you don't follow that kind of diversification, um, the t traditional 60-40 or most asset classes don't work. So I learned that. As we look ahead and we start to think about the depreciation of money or class warfare or international warfare, I don't know how far those things are going to go. Nobody does exactly, um, but uh, you know what I've um, uh, tried to convey before, and you know what's happening, and you should consider the issue of really what is a proper uh, alt-cash types of portfolio that uh, would have stood the test of time through that. The other thing that I learned about it is on all these debt crises, like 100%, which also create the bear market and so on, it's just a matter of, of either restructuring the debt or uh, printing the money to get around it. And then it's uh, the issue of, you know, what is that money worth? 